Yeah, as Diego, as Diego does to, to use me, um, my name is Emilio Lozano, I'm the product manager of, of Moodle Workplace. And, and I'm going to, to, to try to, to tell you why we think Moodle Workplace is the best of Moodle finding for organizational learning. And, and I hope you, you get the same idea after this uh, presentation. So let me start with uh, what is Moodle Workplace, because this is, uh, uh, this is a question we, we, we're asked uh, frequently. Moodle Workplace is uh, built on top of, of, on top of Moodle LMS. So it is 90% Moodle LMS, but it has a set of plugins, a sheet of plugins on top of it to give Moodle Workplace all the specific features we needed for the corporate and uh, organizational uh, uh, market. Right. So on top of it, we have these features that we'll, uh, that we'll discuss later. But the, the good thing about Moodle Workplace is that it's purely 90% of Moodle. We uh, uh, upgrade into Moodle Workplace is as easy as just upgrading your installation to Moodle Workplace is as, as, as any other upgrade in Moodle. And of course, downgrading, it's also possible. So you could uninstall all the Workplace plugin and you could still, you will still have a functional Moodle LMS uh, site. Our releases are always synchronized with Moodle LMS release. So one day after uh, we have a Moodle LMS release, we have our own Moodle WordPress release. So every two months, we, we have a new release with uh, new features. Let me start, uh, let me give you some context on Moodle WordPress before starting to describe all the features. So Moodle WordPress, uh, the, the reason why Moodle WordPress is because the 60% of our revenue, something that you already uh, uh, probably know, 60% um, of our revenue approximate, it's coming from the WordPress market. It's coming from our partners and our, our, most of our partners customers are from the WordPress market, corporate sector, organizations, or even big uh, educational in institutions that are similar to uh, to the big work as, as, as enterprises. So our features are also are very uh, suitable to them. So since most of our revenues are coming from the workplace market, we needed a solution with a specific feature to help our partners to compete in those markets. Because before uh, Moodle Workplace, all of our partners needed to create their own suits, their own solutions corporate solutions and their own implementations of multi-tenancy programs, report builder and things like that to compete in those markets. That's why uh, you, you've seen uh, in the previous presentation, you, you've seen the, this uh, LMS solution by uh, Evias, which is great, you know, but it, it's a typical example that or what a partner can do to, uh, to, to, you know, to address this feature. But as, as you will see, Moodle WordPress, it, it can do it better because we can do it from the inside. It, it's, it's pretty simple. You cannot implement features like multi-tenancy if you don't have full access to the Moodle core. So that's why we wanted to build uh, Moodle WordPress. That's why we, we created Moodle WordPress to help our, our partners to, com to better compete in the corporate sector and, and also to respond to the customer's needs uh that that they really wanted an lms with corporate features based on on, on model so that being said model workplace is still uh gpl version 3 because it's based on on model but this distribution is restricted so we we have a dual a license we have the gpl version 3 license but we have also the wordpress license to restrict uh the distribution of of the code we needed to ensure that our premium partners are able to customize uh, Moodle WordPress as they would do with, with Moodle, because you know that one of the main uh, selling points of Moodle is that it's highly customizable and you can do anything with it. You could do the same with WordPress because it's also highly customizable, but we needed to ensure that our premium partners could have access to the code and we still keep this uh, exclusive for uh, Moodle partners. But not only the premium partners will be able to sell WordPress, also the standard model partners, the premium, the, the, the model partners, uh, as, we, as you, we all know them, they can also use Moodle WordPress on, on our cloud. So, uh, and we, uh, the main reason why this uh, move 
you know, the, be, behind restricting restricting uh, motor board based availability is sustainability because we uh, we want to uh, ensure we are profitable and we uh, can fund our project by bringing more developers to improve the Moodle LMS core. So this, uh, even if Moodle WordPress is restricted, it is it, it still uh, helps to improve Moodle LMS in two ways. The first, the first uh, way is, is by improving our revenues. We are uh, helping our partners to better compete. We are maximizing their revenues and we hope they get more business so they can contribute with more money to the Moodle project. And doing that, we will be able to hire more developers and to have more people working on the Moodle LMS uh, project, which is uh, at the base of Moodle WordPress. We really want Moodle LMS to be the best uh, open LMS in, in the world because we, uh, Moodle WordPress, we're also Moodle LMS. And that's the first way we can improve Moodle, uh, Moodle LMS with Moodle WordPress. But there's another way. We we will be rolling out some features from Moodle WordPress to Moodle LMS. Eventually, all of them could be in Moodle LMS, but it will take some time because uh, we we need to insert that. We keep uh, those features for uh, for some time exclusive to Moodle WordPress. We have been we have done this already. We we implemented custom fields for all entities. Uh, we have uh, done also other fixes in core, and we are about to release Moodle uh, WordPress certificate to Moodle LMS as a community plugin. This is going to happen in, in, in Moodle uh, 3.9. And there's another feature, which is the report builder that is huge. It will be released to Moodle LMS in Moodle 4.0. And, and I can tell you that that will be a game changer because report builder is it's, it's awesome and it's, it's, it has been a long request from the community, so it's coming. We are releasing to Moodle Core in Moodle uh, 4.0. So now we, we I, I gave you some context. Let me uh, go into the detail of all of the features. So I think the main feature, the most requested feature in in in, in WordPress, it's multi-tenancy. Multi-tenancy it's uh, is the ability to create different tenants or spaces you know within the same installation and every one of uh, and each one of those tenants will have their own mm, full lms experience so they are like it's like having different sites different moodle site or workplace site every every site with, with with their own users courses programs and everything but all of them in, in the same installation and this uh, is really good for uh for because it's easy to maintain to upgrade uh, a multi-tenant site because it has only one code base but also um, em empowers the admin and, and 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 allows to reuse and to optimize resources because you can serve things among tenants you can have a course which is shared among all the tenants and in your organization or, or 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 for all of your customers and you can just change you can just have one copy of the course and you can just change it and it will be changed uh, everywhere each tenant has its own look and feel so you can customize the branding the the login page uh with the colors logos and everything and and the users are also isolated so you can uh we insert that Users in one tenant don't have visibility for the users to other tenants because this is basic. This is something that uh, with multi tenancy you you need to have. Right now, uh, only the, the only it's only possible to share courses among tenants. But uh, in two releases in three point nine one, we are improving the multi tenancy scenario. We will allow uh, sending more uh, features, uh, more entities across uh, tenants. And this is again, this is something that even even um, all of our partners in some way have tried to, to replicate. As I said, it's, it's impossible because uh, the only way of doing it properly is if you don't do it from the inset as, as, as we did. The other uh, feature, there's another feature very related with multi-tenancy, which is organization structure. Organization structure allows you to create deep and, and structure and a hierarchy of departments and positions and assign jobs to users. 
by assigning jobs, you create reporting lines. So you can say you can you can you can assign a job as a manager to an employee in a department, or even or even make them a global manager. So it's like the CEO who is the manager of the whole company, regardless of the department. Uh, all the stuff is 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 in. So you could create departments and positions and define these hierarchies, these reporting lines. With this in mind. Um, you can use this in all across all the uh, WordPress features because all the features use organization structure some way. For instance, re with Report Builder, in Report Builder, you can use organization structure to define re uh, report visibility. You can say that this specific report is only available to uh, to the uh, to the sales department, or it's only available to senior developers. And also, you could uh, you could define how the content of the report is shown to the user. So if you're viewing um, a completion report for programs, if you're a manager of the sales department, you will see only people in your department or people in the departments you're manager. And if you're a CEO, you will see in the same report, you will see people across all the company. And, and if you're a user, you will see only your own progress. And the same thing for dynamic rules. You can, you can create dynamic rules based on organization structure, saying that for all the users in the sales department, allocate them into the health and safety uh, program. So it's used everywhere and it's, it's very powerful. And you can create even different views, uh, different frameworks of uh, using organization structure. Well, the report builder. With the report builder, it's, it's, this, is, this is one of our uh, key features with uh, report builder. You can build your own reports using a drag and drop interface. It's very simple. You just pick um, uh, report source that they are predefined. And using the, the, the entities and the fields in that, uh, in, in, in that report source, you can build your own report. You can uh, use aggregation. You can just drag and drop columns, rename them. You can add conditions uh, to pre-filter the report and say, OK, this report will, will work only for, uh, will, will list only uses from India, and that's a condition that the user, the end user will, won't be able to change. Or you can add filters, you can add a country filter to uh, allow people to just filter the report uh, by country. With Report Builder, um, it's great because it's, it, it, it not only allows the user to create custom reports, we are also using Report Builder uh, internally. In all of our features, we use Report Builder to build listings. So we create, we have the concept of system reports. All the reports in Workplace are built with Report Builder. This allows us to create very easily, uh, to add conditions and filters to any page in a Workplace installation. And in a short future, when we introduce the customizable reports, the admin will be able to just customize any listing on the Workplace side. You can add columns or remove them or, re or rearrange column in, in the programs uh, view for managers, uh, and you you will be able to do this for each one of, of the sites. With the report builder, also we can schedule reports, so we can send uh, a report weekly to all the managers in 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 our in our company with the completions from the from the users of their teams in the past week, things like that. So we can easily schedule reports, automate things. And we can even send that to external uh, users. And we have also a data store, which is very related to Report Builder, in which we store all the, uh, not all now, but many of the events that happen on the, on, the, on the platform, and also with the snapshots. So we can just report there for historical uh, uh, data, such as completion. So with the, the data store, we could even report an, uh, on a course, even if that course has been deleted, and things like that. Then we have dynamic rules. Dynamic rules bring automation to more awards. And, and believe me, this is really powerful. And you don't realize how powerful they are until you use them. With dynamic rules, you can define uh, centralized and automated rules. So you can, you can just uh, pick a set of conditions. And when those conditions are met, you can execute some actions very easily. So let's say you want to. Uh, add all the users in the in the training department to the onboarding course on the onboarding programs 
as soon as they are created or when yeah when the, the use, user reduces them in their site if they are from from the sales department you want to allocate them to a program it's a ccs creating it wordpress is a ccs creating a dynamic rules select the conditions for department select any other conditions that they they could even be uh completing a program so you could say for all the users in the sales department who have completed the uh onboarding program allocate them to the induction program so just by selecting conditions and actions you can just create an automation in wordpress this is really powerful we have been uh created our mc site in wordpress and just by defining three or four dynamic rules we uh have been able to automate all the workflows from users, facilitators, and so on, and without any code customizations. So this is really, really powerful. Then we have programs, right? Programs are our new learning entity. In Moodle LMS, you have courses, which is awesome. And we have also, of course, courses, but we, in addition to courses, we have another abstraction level, which is programs. Programs are basically learning, learning pathways. You can create a program by adding courses and, and, and organizing them in, into hierarchical, high, hierarchical or structure of sets and configure all the completion criteria within the sets or for the whole program. So you can say you can add, uh, you can configure a program so the user need to take all the courses in order. And if, and if you do that, the user, uh, the user won't be able to access to the second course until they have uh, completed the first one. Or you could, for a set of for a program, you could uh, uh, set a completion criteria such as uh, uh, complete two out of three courses from this set, and then again, uh, the user could take the courses in any order, and as, and as soon as they complete two, the set will be marked as completed. So you could, with this uh, with this drag and drop interface, you can easily create any learning pathway you want very easily and and and, and, and in a very powerful way. We uh, allow um, also relative dates. So for the allocation for progress and certification that we'll see, you can define dynamic uh, relative dates based on user. You could say that for a program, as, as soon as a user is allocated, they will have one month to complete the program and then one extra week uh, while the program is, is overdue to uh, complete it before it, it, it ends. You could do easily with it there through the programs interface in, in WordPress. And of course, with programs, you can reuse courses because you can add the same course to different programs. And if the user completes the course anywhere, it will be completed in, in, in all the courses, in all the programs that this uh, course will have. With certifications, you can create recurring programs. Well, the certifications are basically recurring programs. You can, you can uh, set an, an expiry date and as soon as the uh, the, um, the the expiry date, uh, so as soon as the, the, the certification is it, it expire, you can define you can set if the user has to complete a reset can recertificate and has to complete a recertification program. This recertification program can be the same one or can be different program. So, for instance, you have the uh, health and safety training. You know, you have a self, um, health and safety program, you create the health and safety certification and you can set the expiry date to one year. And once it has expired, you can configure the recertification and set that when the user, when the certification it's, it expires, the user will need to take a different program. It could be a refresher program with, with some with legis legislation changes or whatever you want to add there to retain the certification. So for new users, the user will need to take the full path and when they uh, retain the certification, they will take this refresher. This can be done very easily in, in, in WordPress. Then we have the certificates. The certificates are our implementation of the custom certificate plugin in, in Moodle LMS. We, it's based on that. And we created, um, um, we massively improved the UI of the certificate. And, and added some things like a QR code for easily uh, for easily verification. It, it's really handy. And then uh, we make it we made it work with dynamic rules. So in in Moodle Workplace, you can issue a certificate using dynamic rules. You can say when the user completes this program and this program and this program, then issue this certificate, and that's it. 
And we're working right now in uh, make, it, make the certificate work in the course context. So we are creating an activity module, and this is exactly what we are going to release to Moodle LMS. So in 3.9, uh, you will have WordPress certificates available as, as, a community, as a community plugin. The appointments booking module, this is, as the name says, this is for booking appointments. So with this, you can create as, as a manager, as a teacher, whatever you want to call the role, you can create uh, appointments, you can manage, you can create sessions, you can say, okay, I, I'm going to create a seminar which it will last for three days. So we'll, I have, we'll have a, a, an event with three sessions in different days. So the users, the students, can just uh, sign up and register for the events. Or you could create like uh, in a given time frame, you can split it into time slots. So you can say from 9 to a.m. to 1 p.m. I will be available for tutor seats in a slots of 30, min uh, 30 minutes with five minutes in between. And with just a single click, you create all the events and the, and the uh, users can subscribe to them. We are working in, in, a, uh, in a video conferencing integration with Moodle Workplace. And when we have that, which is now, we will start working on integrating that video conferencing tools into the appointments booking. So you can, uh, so you can uh, create the room in the, in the video conferencing uh, tool while you create the appointments. Okay, the WordPress branded app, we have already an app. We have also an app, which is a free app, which is based on the Moodle app with the WordPress feature. And of course, we can all, we have also branded apps and, and our features, you know, uh, we have the, the learner view and prison will have the manager view in, in, in the app. This is nothing new in here apart from the WordPress features to be working in the, in, in the app. So what's next? In 3.9, which we're working right now, the, um, we'll have built-in video conferencing. We are certifying Big Blue Button. As you've seen, it's working right now in Moodle WordPress because this is Moodle WordPress, but we're still working, finalizing some small bits of the integration, and it will be also available in Moodle Cloud pretty soon. But the main topic of this release is import-export. That I will show you now because I'm running out of time, so I will move pretty soon, apart from the certificate. With import export, with the import export engine, which is huge, you know, we have been working on this for two releases. We have created like a like a, an engine, a UI. Uh, it's like a wizard with several steps, where you can select an importer, an exporter, sorry, and uh, from all the available, you can export the whole tenant, program, certification, courses, user, or whatever you want. And following, uh, uh, you know, all the steps of the of the uh, wizard, you know you will uh, create this export and you will be able to export that to a file, right? It's, it's similar to the backup and restore uh, course, but once you have the export, you could uh, don't upload it into another workplace set and import it. And when you import it, we have implemented uh, things like uh, chained importing, conflict resolution, and things like that. So you will be able to export a whole tenant in Moodle workplace in a Moodle WordPress site and import it into another tenant, into another WordPress site, or even uh, create, export all the programs for one tenant in your WordPress installation and import it into another tenant. We have designed this in, in a way that it's it's highly pluggable because we we the, the importers and the exporters work like plugin, pretty similar. So our partners will be able to create their own importers and exporters to be you know plugged into our engine. With this also, this is ready to implement importers and exporters from and to external system. I don't know, you can import your user from your HR system, you can uh, import programs for other LMS or export your courses to other LMS, export your courses to your, your programs to other LMS or whatever. It will depend on uh, what, which plan is we implement, but this is really, really, really powerful. And then, well, the other thing we have in Moodle uh, 3.9, as, as I said, is the certificate will we, we roll up to Moodle Core. We'll have the new activity module, and we'll be, uh, we will release that uh, as, a, as a plan. So after that, what is coming in the, in the midterm, then we have in, in summer, we have Moodle 3.9. We're focusing on tenancy learning, so we will improve the multi-tenancy of Moodle Workplace. It, it is very good right now, but it, it will be awesome uh, in summer because 
we will implement the concept of shared spaces where you will you, you can have any of the work entities in that shared space will be it can be shared among you know uh, all the tenants or or, or or a specific tenants and and will implement this sharing gradually for all of the work entities so pretty soon you will be able to share a single program across all your tenants con share the same uh organization structural departments and positions across all of your tenants and so on and after that release in our in a roadmap we have two very big topics which is report builder and dashboards that will improve uh, massively you know with report builder we will add visualizations um uh, report based blocks uh customizable dashboards and a lots of lots of new features so so stay tuned because because this is just the beginning and uh and that's it i hope i'm i'm on time so if you have any questions i will be more than happy to uh answer them now okay uh let me go through the questions if is there any question So I have one question this, can we allow learning pathways to entire group? I don't really understand uh, your question, but I think that, you know, learning pathways, which is programs, you can, you have allocation as the courses enrollment. So you can allocate any collective of users. You can uh, use cohorts to uh, using dynamic rules to allocate people to a certificate. You can create a dynamic rule to allocate uh, whole departments uh into a certificate so it's very flexible and you can uh you can control the user uh, as you want because it, it's super flexible using using dynamic uh rules uh your move 3.91 and move 3.0 all of them are, are, are i don't know if, if when, when you ask uh Muralida, when you ask about if it's suitable for academics, is you, you you mean that if this is suitable for using in in, in education, uh, education ed, ed, educational organizations like big universities and so on? I think it is, you know, because the features we have are are uh, pretty suitable. You know, the big universities, big uh, education institutions, they really need features like multi tenancy programs this organization is structure also report builder and dynamic rules so i don't see a problem on using it on on education uh, okay payment gateway this is this is a feature in a roadmap right uh, this question is from sobi it's in a roadmap we're going to implement uh e-commerce in in Moodle workplace and and, uh, and a payment gateway but for now you know that any any payment gateway that works in Moodle lms it would work also in workplace including uh, of course a paypal enrollment uh, method that you have in Moodle port so yes uh, it will work uh, abib what well, you ask about uh keep organizational hierarchy in mind to, to you know to assign courses to managers and the team members that's exactly what the organization structure does if with the organization structure you can even allow the manager when you define the position as a manager you can say this manager is a, this position is for a for a department manager and as a department manager uh, they are allowed to allocate uses to programs to report on them or to receive notification. If you mark, if you check the allocate people on programs as a manager, you will have the programs feature available in your dashboard, in your launcher, and, and you will be able to allocate your people from your departments into programs. Uh, <clears throat> honey, about uh, what is the primary use of Moodle Workplace? Uh, you can use it for 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 anything you know because in fact uh, this is it's great with multi-tenancy you can use it both for internal training and also for external training to customers and uh on providers or whatever because you have multi-tenancy so in the same site you can have different tenants and each tenant it can be for uh for a purpose so yeah absolutely and this is great you know with real with with, with the ability to reuse courses you can uh, use this for uh, companies selling training because you can have the same copy of the course and a tenant for it for its customer its customer with its own look and feel and you can sell, sell the same course 
to many customers. Mm. Yeah, you know, um, in, about integration, what a WordPress is really to be integrated with anything because it, we have our services API, all of our features have also an, an uh, web services API, so they are really to be integrated. So we, our partners are developing integrations for each one of the systems because as you know, uh, each integration for each customer, it used to have uh, a specific requirements, but, uh, but, but yes, uh, it can be integrated, absolutely. Uh, 3.9 versus 3.9 3 3 import export. It is, it is what is coming in 3. Point, what WordPress uh, uh, 3.9. That's the key difference. Uh, we are introducing features in all of our features and in all our releases. So, well, last question. Um, okay, this is easy, Rajesh. Um, if, if you are man, dear, I will take two. Regis, we have a, we have a, a YouTube. Uh, in YouTube, we have training videos. You can you can go to workplace documentation. Go to the moral uh, documentation page. Go to the workplace sector, and for each one of sections and for each one of the features, you will find a training video with all uh, for uh, all the features. And Farhan. This is for now. This is only restricted to partners. Partners are the only ones who can uh, contribute to Moodle Workplace. But we have created a test environment for plugin developers to allow plugin developers to test their plugins with multi-tenancy feature to make sure it works, and so they can just uh, make it work with we make them work with uh, Moodle Workplace. Okay, Diego, I'm sorry because I took two questions, and uh, thank you so much. Thank you so much for coming. Don't worry, Emilio. Uh, when there is questions like people are interested, it's always good to to hear your ideas. Um, if you would like to carry on learning about Workplace, uh, Paul is going to start in, in two minutes, uh, the next session and a sort of a workshop. Uh, thank you, Emilio, for this introduction and see you around. Thank you. Please don't miss Paul's workshop. It's amazing. <laughs>